What's up everyone? Today's video is going to be similar to the last one, but today's video is going to cover Bill Conrad, who was caught during To Catch a Predator. He was a Texas lawmaker who was caught during To Catch a Predator, and the uh, results of the investigation were not necessarily what was expected, but we're going to cover that later on in the video. If you guys enjoy the video, follow, like, subscribe, and share. We'll get right to it. To Catch a Predator was and still is an extremely popular show from Dateline NBC which featured Chris Hansen going to sting operations in cooperation with multiple predator watchdog groups to expose and assist in the arrest of pedophiles. The show would take place all over the U.S. in areas like Flagler Beach, Florida, Oceanside, California, and where this particular story took place, Murphy, Texas. Murphy is just outside of Dallas, which is the biggest city of Texas. The operation caught one of the most shocking suspects in the history of the entire show, a local assistant district attorney. That's right, Hanson caught a lawmaker breaking the law. Let's take a look at this. Viewer discretion is advised for this video because there are potentially sensitive topics like um, child grooming, sexual content, and suicide. So you've been warned. On November 5th, 2006, To Catch a Predator moved into Murphy, Texas for his next sting operation. The operation was in cooperation with the Predator Watchdog Group Perverted Justice, one of the groups that regularly took part in the joint investigations with Dateline and Hansen. One of the final people caught in the Murphy investigation was an absolute shock to Perverted Justice, Dateline NBC, and Hansen himself. Louis William Conrad Jr., or Bill Conrad, was an assistant district attorney in the area. Yeah, they caught a lawmaker breaking the law. Conrad's chat room name was inexcess double zero, and Conrad attempted to lie and label himself as a college student so the age gap wouldn't look as bad, I suppose. I have no idea his logic behind that. Anyway, Conrad was 56 at the time of the event, and the average college student is anywhere between 18 and 25. Even if he was between 18 and 25, it's still illegal to engage in any sort of sexual activity with a minor in the U.S. And it's frickin' gross. The chat is quite graphic, so I won't go too into detail, but Conrad groomed the decoy by telling them that he liked younger boys. And when questioned about this by the decoy, who asked if he preferred sex or dating, Conrad answers with the simple response, both. Disturbing that a lawmaker would want anything to do with children in this sort of manner, but later on in the chat, Conrad sent photos of himself to the decoy, still thinking he was a 13-year-old boy just curious about sex. Conrad also asked the decoy if he'd be willing to cuddle, and when the boy asked what do you mean, Conrad responded deviously with holding on to each other, feeling all over. This is as far as I'm going to go into the chat, because it gets way worse to this, and I really don't want to trigger anyone's PTSD if they have experienced anything as terrible as this. Eventually, the decoy tries to convince Conrad to come over via a phone call. Conrad never shows up, but according to Texas law, Conrad has already committed crimes regarding the sexually explicit chat with the decoy. Hansen interviewed former Murphy Police Chief Bill Myrick, who compiled enough evidence to take to a local judge for an arrest warrant. Once the judge gave Murphy Police Department the arrest warrant, Myrick contacted the police in the town that Conrad lived in, Terrell. Terrell is about 35 miles away from Murphy, but Myrick wanted to have as many arms as he could to take down this absolute weirdo. With the help of the Terrell Police Department, both units converge on the house, but can't get Conrad to answer the door. The Terrell Department calls a SWAT team, hoping they can breach in and execute the search warrant, and hopefully execute the arrest warrant as well. Both units waited outside of Conrad's house for upwards of 45 minutes until the SWAT team arrived. As soon as the SWAT team entered Conrad's house, they found Conrad in the hallway. Conrad had a pistol in his hand and informed them that he didn't plan to hurt any of them, and then shot himself in the head. Emergency medical crews brought Conrad's body to the Parkland Memorial Hospital in Dallas, where he later died of his injuries. Conrad's story led to the demise of the show from Dateline, as it stirred up too much controversy regarding the show itself, Conrad's actions, Bill Myrick, and the Murphy Police, and even the legal action taken by the Murphy Police. In 2008, To Catch Predator would sadly be canceled from all programming and no longer hosted any new episodes. Though I don't think there's any reruns of To Catch a Predator itself, they're all posted on YouTube, you can find them quite easily, just look up To Catch a Predator. And Hansen is still pretty active with his new shows like Crime Watch Daily, and I think he has a YouTube series called like Take a Seat with Chris Hansen or something like that. Date Live is also still active to this day, and it hasn't been cancelled as it's one of NBC's most successful in-depth investigation shows. Bill Myrick, police chief of the Murphy Police Department at the time of the episode when it aired back in 2006, was fired in 2008, citing that he didn't handle that case properly, and that he was more interested in the camera crews from Chris Hansen's crew instead of the actual case itself. Not only did this dude kill himself, he killed Chris Hansen's show with him. <laughs> so if you guys enjoyed the video, please follow, please like, subscribe, share this video, do whatever you gotta do, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.